Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kate Schmidtkunz, and I'm proud to say that I am the Learning Resource Coordinator for the Cardinal Stritch University College of Nursing and Health Sciences. That's quite a long title, but we, we hear the term Learning Resource Center. And basically what that is, is this is the lab for the students, the nursing students, to come with their faculty and to learn nursing skills, and then to come back and to practice with me to perfect those skills and to develop confidence. And before they go out into the clinical areas and our hospitals, they have some sense of, sense of performing these skills in the lab, having some comfort, um, performing them correctly with the mindfulness of infection control practices that are required. So I would just like to kind of walk through some of the things that we have here for you. I'm proud to say we have a number of students here this morning working uh, very hard and very diligently on their skills, which I'm very proud of. So first off, let's start over here with our simulation man. And we'll talk about simulation in a little bit. Um, but these are health, health assessment students. And health assessment is really the foundation of our nursing program. Um, students need to be able to assess their patients from head to toe. And that's what this health assessment class is. At the end of the semester, these students will be required to do a head to toe assessment and to complete that successfully in order to pass the course. So they will come up here and practice. Um, we have all kinds of information for them, visual information and books for them to listen to heart sounds, listen to lung sounds, um, really, really perfect their skills so that when they go into the clinical setting again, they have the ability to perform that assessment with a degree of safetyness and competence. So again, these are our wonderful health assessment students who are practicing up here in the LRC. Then we have a student over here who is working with her Pixis, which is a medication administration set, set up. And she is drawing up some insulin that she's going to be giving her patient um, in a short period of time. So again, students learn how to navigate the technology that's available to them in a medication administration set, set up. Um, they are taught how to do that safely and correctly. They are monitored to make sure that they actually do perform the skill correctly before they go out into the clinical setting. Um, and it's not just giving an injection, but knowing where to give the injection, how to give the injection. And this wonderful student has her Bible with her, which is our drug handbook. So she actually knows exactly all about this insulin that she's supposed to be giving. What it's for, what are the side effects, what should she look for in her patient? So she's doing a great job, great job. And then as you can see, we have quite a few number of mannequins here as well. Um, these mannequins serve the students again um, with many kinds of different skills that the students will need to perform. Um, again, with their faculty first, they're instructed, um, demonstrated and instructed in skills. So it could be anything as simple or basic as how learning how to take a blood pressure, um, again, learning a little bit more advanced skills. Um, this mannequin has the ability for us to do tracheostomy care and suctioning. So our student here is um, instructing her patient in what she's going to be performing today. Um, we make it a little easier for the students. We have kits available for the students. So all they have to do is come up, grab the kit, grab their skill checkoff sheet so they follow along with uh, the steps that are required so that they do the, the, uh, 
skill competently. Again, they will be checked off on these before they go into clinical. And then we have another mannequin over here who is, um, needs a nasogastric tube. So the stu students will learn about the nasogastric tube, the importance of it, why a patient would need it. Nurses are always teaching. So we're always teaching our, our patients um, what we're doing and why it's important so that they, they understand what's going on. And then we have a student here who is performing a central line dressing change. She has her skill checklist in front of her and she has her kit. Um, so she is learning how to perform, put on sterile gloves and perform a sterile dressing change. We also have students that more advanced, the juniors and the seniors, who learn to draw blood or give medications through those central venous lines, which is a very, um, very advanced skill that our, that our juniors and seniors perform that they will be doing again in the clinical setting. You see, we have our sharps containers and we have our gloves. Our students all have their masks on. So we're very compliant with um, everything that we need to be compliant with in this day and age. And then as we move down, it's a little challenging to see, but we do have cubicles alongside the room here. We've got about six. So if students don't particularly need a mannequin to work on and maybe just wanna work with them, a chest model, they have the ability to do that in a smaller setting here. And we have six of those available to students. And now we come down to our, one of our favorite mannequins. We call him grandpa, because <laughs> he kind of looks like everyone's grandpa. So he's our geriatric mannequin and the students do have performed um, hanging, a ga uh, feeding, tube feeding for this patient. So they learn how to give medications through a gastrostomy tube into the stomach. They learn how to give medications. Um, and this uh, mannequin, obviously he's got some problems with his pulse oxygen level. So he's gonna be getting a little oxygen. So the student is learning how to do that as well. Okay. And then I think over here, for again, for our juniors and seniors, we have, we talked about the little cubicles that are here. This is an intravenous arm. So the students are learning how to put a peripheral intravenous into the arm of their patients and hang some fluids. Um, always a good idea to practice that before we get into the clinical setting and practice on a, on a real patient. Again, everything is set up for the students to use. We have the checklist for them to follow. So it makes it really nice and convenient for the students when they run in between classes and they only have a short period of time, everything is set up and ready for them to go um, so they can practice skills during the course of the week to develop their confidence and to develop competence. So it's a wonderful place for faculty and students to come and to use. Hours are open, they're very flexible and I'm here as a resource for them to kind of just guide them in the right direction. So it's a wonderful opportunity for our students. As you can see, they're all busy and they're very happy to be here as they learn and grow. So thank you. And if we can have any questions from anyone, we'd be happy to entertain that too, as the students are working diligently. Um, I could talk a little bit about simulation. Um, everyone probably has an idea of simulation. Um, we do that at a couple of times during the course of the semester where the faculty will come up with their clinical students, which is a nice small group, anywhere from six to eight people, students, and they will have a simulation experience, which means it mimics what's going on in the clinical setting but because of the COVID pandemic, we've had limited ability to get into the clinical sites. So this LRC has been a lot more active 
with students coming up and actually performing skills and tasks and assessments um, in the setting here. So they learn how to work together as students. They learn how to work as a team. They learn how to problem solve. They learn most especially how to critical think when there's a problem or an issue. We want students to think beyond just the focus of the skill and to think beyond the big picture, what is going on with my patient. And if there's a problem, how am I gonna, how am I gonna work with my teammates um, to collaborate with them, to resolve some of the problems that are going on with my patient, to be proactive. Um, we also talk to them about conflict re resolution. We do some problem solving and some scenarios, working with maybe families that are very um, challenged at a time when their loved ones are, diff are, are ill, um, physicians that can be a little bit caustic, staff that can be tired and a little agitated, all those things that, that the students may see in a true life clinical setting is something that we will talk about in a, in a clinical, in a simulation setting. So makes it um, a little bit more real. So when they see these experiences in real life, they will be better prepared to, to rise to the challenge of meeting some of those needs. So good. We'll let all the students get back to work because they're, they're very busy and they got a lot to do and they got a lot of patients to care for. So we'll just take a look and see. Any questions or concerns? No? Do you guys want to talk a little about the college? I'll try to get this monitor on, maybe. going to try to get our simulation on. So my name is Madeline Griffin and I am a sophomore here at Cardinal Church University. Um, and so I am in my second year of nursing school. Um, and I just wanted to let you guys know my experience here at Stritch. Um, my experience here has been very, very pleasant. Kate and all the staff here is outstanding. Um, that's what's nice about going to a smaller school is having that ability to have that relationship with your faculty and um, all the resources here are available for everybody as well. Um, it's a great environment. Every student that I've dealt with is very helpful. We're all in it together type of mentality. And yeah, it's a very, very good school to go to. Can't wait for you guys to come on and be a part of the stretch team.
simulation and while the students are working it, i would like to see more a little few more students just give a little bit of update about what their experience has been as cargo trips and then we'll talk a little bit about more about the simulation and maybe put the monitor on if you can see that so go ahead Um, hello, my name is Hannah Hacker. Um, I'm also a sophomore here at Stritch, and I'm also the president of the SNA club here at Stritch, which is a fantastic club to be in for any nursing student that wants to be in it. And um, like Maddie said, like Kate is amazing, and all the faculty is here to help you with whatever you need. Um, I know personally, I've emailed a lot of teachers late at night, and they still email me right away back and it's very comforting knowing that people are here for you when you are in time of a need, especially right now with online classes and not being able to go to clinical. It's amazing. <laughs> it's too bad we can't interview the the mannequins because they would probably have all kinds of interesting things to say because they've been extremely busy these past couple of months with students coming in practicing skills so that would that would be really fun if we could get them to talk <laughs> but let me bring you back over this is our simulation man and I kind of just wanted to talk a little bit more about that because that's such a very important and vital part of the College of Nursing here at Cardinal Stritch. So again, we talked about simulation is kind of like a day in the life of, of a clinical experience, but we do it here in the lab with the faculty and the students. So we will give the students a scenario, a healthcare scenario, and the students would have to come into the patient's room just as they would in the hospital setting, come in and do their introductions, do the, perform their hand hygiene, um, do their patient identifiers, making sure they have the correct patient, explaining what they're doing to, with our patient. Lot, again, lots of teaching always. Nurses are always teaching not only our patients, but families and loved ones that are um, at the bedside with our patient. So as you can see on our monitor here, um, the students will have, um, juniors and seniors will have the ability to learn how to read these monitors that they'll see in the hospital. They'll understand what this rhythm and this rate of the heart means. And if it's abnormal, what does that mean? And what am I going to do about that? Here's their blood oxygen level. Um, their blood pressure is here, their heart rate, respiratory rate, and their temperature. So what we do in a simulation is I kind of hide in the other side of the room. And with my little iPad here, I make adjustments to the mannequin. And the students will be required to identify that something is going wrong with my patient. You can see the heart rate is elevated. The respiratory rate is elevated. I'm changing currently the nice sinus rhythm that the patient has. And now they're in an abnormal rhythm. The students would have to identify what that means. It may be difficult to hear, but you can hear there's beeping going on. So that will alert the nurse or the student to um, changes as to what's going on. So the student who's taking care of this patient now with their other student that they collaborate with will have to determine what they need to do to figure out what's going on with that patient. And again, it goes back where we started in the beginning today. It goes back to a thorough head to toe assessment. Um, figuring out what is going on with the patient, looking at the surroundings and see if there's something that is unplugged or not working that is very common. We look at our intravenous fluids. We look at this pump to make sure that it's turned on, that it's working. We make sure that it's at the correct rate for our patient. 
We may have to do a little mathematics to figure out uh, what we're doing or what we, what we need to do. We may need to go over here to our medication pixis and give some medications to our patient based on the orders from our physician that we're, we've been given. And then again, the nurses are gonna collaborate again and probably have to make a contact with the physician due to the changing condition. But the nurse, the student nurse would be totally prepared to call that physician based on her assessment findings, uh, the vital signs that are taken, the medications that may have been administered, what's going on with that patient. We um, have to communicate that to the physician so that they can make a decision as to how to treat that patient. And then miraculously, what happens is that our patients get better in simulation, generally. And that always makes the students feel very good. So again, this is a very, very comfortable situation for the students. Um, simulation um, happens in a job where, where students go to a, a new job. As a new employee, you will have a lot of simulation that will help you understand and appreciate what's going on on your unit, how to orientate properly, what kind of patients may be on your unit. And um, it's really a tremendous way of pulling all the pieces together that you've learned in theory and that you've learned in clinical and you bring it to a simulation setting. And we, the faculty will see how the students can integrate all of those concepts of theory and practice, critical thinking, problem solving, again, working well with others in collaboration to do what's best for our patients. So, whoop, and we better not lose our mask because then we'll be in trouble. So again, um, clinical, the simulation experience is, can be a little stressful sometimes for, for the uh, students, but I think overall, they generally get a, a tremendous amount out of it, um, which is a great thing, especially for many of us for the past year who have not been able to get into the clinical setting, which has been very, very difficult. So we're hoping in fall, that that will resume and students can get, get back into the clinical setting where they can put everything they've been learning, skills and theory it, to use um, with real patients. So thank you. Any questions? Anyone having trouble and need some assistance? Uh-oh, we have a student in trouble. No, just a student with a question. All right. so how do I apply this onto the end of one of these? Okay, this is a student that has not quite learned yet how to um, draw blood from a central line. And we would never put her in that position. She would never do that. She's an actor today. <laughs> but we can, I can certainly show her. Um, we can talk about the importance of putting on gloves. And that when you get to your junior and senior year, this is something that your faculty will teach you. And then you will perfect that skill. We talk about how to clean this catheter, this, the hub of this catheter, we're gonna clean it. And the, the eventual goal is that we're going to get a blood sample um, from these, this is called the central line. We're gonna get a blood sample. We're gonna send that to the lab for an evaluation. So that is something that the students will learn when they're, um, in a junior, senior year, because they will be doing that in a clinical setting um, or in a hospital setting when they uh, have completed their, their program here. So good for you. Good, good, she is very much an overachiever. That's great. But we, we have to, nurses always have to know their limitations as well. If there's something that we don't know, because we don't know everything, we, that's why we have people around to help us and to guide us and to say, you know, that's something I don't know. That's not something I'm familiar with or that we've been taught yet. So I'm gonna just step back and ask a lot of questions and ask for help. So very good. Great. Thank you. Thank you all. I hope that um, this has helped many of you who really didn't know a lot about the Cardinal Street, Ruth S. Coleman, College of Nursing and Health Sciences Learning Resource 
lab? That's that's a lot to say. Um, but again, this is a wonderful opportunity for our faculty and our students to come up here and practice and to become proficient at skills, develop confidence that they need when they go into the clinical setting. And I'm hopefully hoping that we've achieved, hopefully we have achieved that. And students come back, junior, uh, sophomore, junior, seniors. Seniors come back to relearn skills that they may have forgotten, just as I would if I would be in practice and haven't done something for a while. So this, is, this lab is always available to our students to improve their skills, perfect their skills, and develop that confidence that they need. So thank you all. Thank you all. Appreciate it.